As for the state of play in Ukraine tonight, military forces are on the move in and around the country. The government in Kiev is resuming its offensive against pro-Russian elements in eastern cities. It was a local politician who was kidnapped and killed. And today, hundreds of U.S. troops touched down in eastern Europe. They will be deployed there for a month of military exercises meant to bolster Washington's allies there. About 150 paratroopers arrived at a base in northwestern Poland. More are due in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania by next week. The Russians are holding their own troop drills with forces stationed along Ukraine's eastern border. Today, Russia's foreign minister warned that Moscow will respond if its interests are attacked in Ukraine. He said the forces are there to protect Russian interests in Ukraine. The U.S. is calling those comments ludicrous. And an American journalist covering the standoff in Ukraine is in the hands of pro-Russian gunmen tonight. They say the vice news correspondent could be a spy. He was detained in Sloviansk. It's one of the cities where Ukraine's forces are trying to drive out pro-Russia activists. Jackie Rowland reports. Pro-Russia activists have reinforced the barricades around the public buildings they're occupying in Sloviansk. They've heard the acting president has relaunched the so-called anti-terrorist operations, but they say they're not worried. This is not the first ultimatum. Secondly, we don't consider any of his words to mean action. He doesn't do anything. He's just a false governor, and this whole government is illegitimate. The operation is apparently going to focus on breaking up what the government in Kiev describes as gangs. But the people behind the sandbags say they're ready to resist any attack. Besides, they know that the last time Kiev sent the army in, many soldiers proved unwilling to confront pro-Russia demonstrators. That has emboldened the rebels. It was the abduction and murder of a local politician, seen here arguing with pro-Russia demonstrators a week ago, that triggered the new operation. Now Kiev says it has proof that Russia was involved in his disappearance and death. All of this comes a day after the U.S. vice president visited Kiev and promised support for the interim government. As the standoff with Russia intensifies, they will need all the help they can get. We hope that if there is aggression from the Russian Federation, the U.S. assistance will be more substantial. At least we have the support of the United States. They will not leave us alone with the aggressor. And the resolve of Ukraine and the United States to resist Russian involvement here may be tested sooner rather than later. Moscow says that if its interests are attacked in Ukraine, it will respond. Jackie Rowland, Al Jazeera, Slovyansk. Retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling knows all about operating military forces in this region. He served as the commanding general of the U.S. Army in Europe, and he joins us tonight. Mark, welcome. Thank you, John. Uh, can you give us an idea of what you think these exercises, what's the point of these exercises, and why are they important to the United States? Well, I think, first of all, it's to show resolve, uh, not only for what's going on in Ukraine, which is not a NATO member, but to uh, also give resolve to some of our NATO members which are very concerned and have high anxiety about the expansion of Russia. Uh, we have practiced these exercises before when I was the commander in Europe. They continue to do those today. The unit that you see uh, participating in operations in both Poland and in the Balkan, uh, I'm sorry, the Baltics, uh, all three of the Baltic countries, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, are from the 173rd Airborne Brigade Combat Team, which is stationed in Italy. So their response to this operation, a parachute, elements of a parachute brigade coming in to conduct exercise is normal. We used to do it all the time. So it's, so it's normal. Does, then does that mean it really doesn't have that much impact? No, not at all. I think this is sending a clear signal to Russia that we are in fact prepared to, first of all, protect our NATO allies. Uh, the 28 NATO members are standing firm in this. I think others are certainly supporting the military, are certainly supporting the military of Ukraine because they've seen this kind of expansion. But I think it's a, it's a clear signal that we are ready to respond if need be. It's one of several tools we have as well as the diplomatic and the informational and the economic tools which our governments uh, both in the United States and in Europe are attempting to bring to bear in a consolidated effort. Right, but, but I, I wanted to get back to you. You said it's usual. Doesn't the United States need to do something that's unusual in order to uh, get the attention of the Russians? Right. Well, I think this is unusual because it's unplanned. 
but it shows over years of practice and cooperation between our NATO allies that we can do this very quickly. And I think that in and of itself sends a signal. This, this isn't days and, and weeks in the making. This was immediately. They were, it was announced the other day, and now they're there. So these, uh, these airborne troops coming out of Italy were quickly flown in to both Poland and the Baltic states, and they're prepared to exercise in a uh, uh, unplanned manner. So I, I think it's a significant signal that we are prepared to stand firm with our NATO allies. On, on this program last night, we heard someone suggest that the United States should put boots on the ground in Ukraine. Is that a good idea? I don't think so. Not yet. Uh, I, I think uh, the Ukrainian government uh, has to uh, certainly confront some of the issues, and I think the conversations between the vice president and the prime minister of Ukraine uh, went a long way in that effort. Uh, probably some consultation about what Ukraine should do, uh, what the United States could do in support. But I think some of those policies and some of those plans are still, uh, shouldn't be discussed on the air, but they are certainly uh, being discussed. General Mark Hurtling. General, thanks again.